and Jow. What's up, everybody? All right, so we're gonna do like a news update, channel update, bunch of updating in this video. Uh, I would appreciate it if you smash the like button, comment, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. If you're new to the channel, I am a travel vlogger, world travel vlogger. I've been uh, in Vietnam for the past year and a half, though, due to the COVID. I did do some Hong Kong uh, footage uh, when I was first here, when I was still able to travel. So I'll be going to lots of different countries once uh, travel's opened up again. So I'd really appreciate it if you smash the like button. So yeah, let's let's get into a bunch of information on Vietnam, my channel, travel, uh, all, all this stuff. So, okay, so first thing. COVID, how's COVID looking here? Um, well, I can tell you in Saigon, it's been like over 30 something days since any kind of transmission has happened. So they've reopened everything as of Friday. So now the entire city's open again. We're completely open. There is no kind of uh, lockdown anymore or anything like this. They're still, of course, encouraging like social distancing and things like this. Um, and, you know, we handled this third wave really well because we uh you know listened wore our masks didn't go places in large groups and it passed fast again like it has the two times before that so it just goes to show when you kind of listen and everybody follows the rules that it goes pretty pretty well uh, i'm happy with the results here i'm happy that i'm here i couldn't have been essentially uh stuck in another country that could be too much better than what we have here you know it's i was very fortunate that i chose vietnam to home base and live out of so if you didn't know my channel is going to be traveling all over the world like all different parts of the place uh, i know novice japanese you know i studied japanese in in high school and then i did ajat for a year or two in my 20s um so i i know very you know basic conversational uh Japanese. I'm, I'm nothing special and I'm sure I'll make many mistakes when I'm in Japan, but I can at least uh, carry a conversation to, to an extent. So, and I'll be studying it again soon enough. Uh, once, once I know like we're going to have like some kind of uh, vaccine passport. Big red Anna, Charlie. I think that's the only one. <laughs> he was big. He's making his way towards my head. So yeah, uh, I, I hope to go to Japan first, but like wherever I can kind of go first and get back to is what I'll be doing. Um, you know, I don't mind going to Seoul. I know very little Korean, but I know like, I don't know, 50 words in Korean maybe. So I know enough to like get around in, in Korea as well. I've been there a bunch of times and um, I do fine. The first time I went there, I went with my, at that time, Chinese girlfriend and a lot of uh, Koreans there are no Chinese so we did really well and then I went back solo a few times and I did just fine you know uh, I've never really had a struggle of the language barrier thing I'm not scared to like point at things and ask and uh, I rarely try to use Google Translate I just try to like figure it out but yeah it, it, if you didn't know we're gonna be traveling a bunch here probably with by the beginning of next year um, I'll take whatever vaccine they offer as long as it's not a the China one or the Russian one I don't care I'll take it jab away um, I'll be healthy by then as far as the weight loss thing I'll, I'll shoot that video maybe on Wednesday uh, we started off at around 232 and I'm down to about 223 right now in nine days so I'm doing really really well I'm sticking to the diet um, I'm eating very healthy very clean okay so let's get back into that so like you know, Vietnam's been talking about possibly doing a tourist travel bubble thing in like mid-July, right? Well, they're releasing more information on what they want to do. And the way that they're saying it is they want to open like Nha Trang and like possibly Vung Tau and like just tourist areas and have you stay there, essentially. And they're still saying kind of a 14-day quarantine um a, a lot of other people like on opinion pieces are, are saying like two to four days like i'm thinking if you're vaccinated in which the reasoning for that would be it's not even that scientific it's just that 
I think the best bet you would be if you're going to want to do one of these things is have the vaccine for 30 days before you even try to come travel here. And then get tested when you before you come here on a negative test. Once you get here, have a negative test. And then I think they'll want you to do like a, a two or four day quarantine at some point. Like I think they're going to initially roll out with the 14 day quarantine, which of course isn't going to go over well. That's you know, a complete waste time of your life unless you're like planning to move to the place forever. You know what I'm saying? So my guess is that they are, Xin chào, hello. <laughs> Little girl grabbing my leg. <laughs> She's very cute. Here, I'll show you. <laughs> She's walking right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> she was sitting on camera for sure. <laughs> she was cute. Um, so yeah, I think they're going to do 14 days at first, probably in the middle of summer, because they're just not going to want to risk. Hello again, Hello. They're just not going to want to risk uh, having you know a flare up again just to do some tourism. <laughs> Granted, yeah, they're they're tourists. Uh... Hello. <laughs> She's so happy. Granted, their tourism is is heavily impacted almost all the stuff you see like relied on some kind of tourism that's closed so they really do want tourism back I mean granted it's not like a huge chunk of their GDP like uh, Thailand but they still want it yeah you're talkative <laughs> granted it's not like a huge chunk of the, the GDP like uh, Thailand they still want to you know recover from from that the devastation that has closed them. I got a best friend right next to me. Hello. <laughs> She's so cute and nice. <laughs> She's got like one of those little wind windmill things. Um, so my, my thinking process is they're probably going to do just those destination towns and you're going to have some kind of quarantine. I'm not sure if it's gonna be 14 days, two days, four days, five days, six days, it's kind of all speculation. But at least the government is now talking about it and trying to, yes. <laughs> this little girl loves me. <laughs> she wants to hold the camera now. <laughs> I'll show you. They've been walking with me five minutes now, playing with their little twirly thing. <laughs> So that's that's what I think um, is going to happen with the the whole tourism bubble thing. Oh, she's still right next to me. I'm very popular. <laughs> Maybe she knows I'm a famous YouTuber. No, she's hitting me. <laughs> she wants the camera. She keeps trying to grab the camera. She's funny. I don't know what this is. Some kind of propaganda. It looks like. Yeah, probably like uh, talking about like government achievements and stuff like this, I'm going to assume. Uh, the next thing we can talk about is the subway. So the subway is 100% first line is delayed till next year. Um, they're having all kinds of issues with it besides for it having, you know, a few cracks areas and a few of the pads fall out. Other things is, is land, land rights. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> uh, the bridge from D2 to D1 also is having a problem with land rights. It's supposed to be finished by the end of the year, but we'll see. What's up, dude? Yo. But we'll, we'll see. <laughs> oh, they're smoking weed. That is definitely the fresh scent of cannabis. It's a bold area to smoke up cannabis, huh? Her mom's right behind me, by the way. So her mom's like watching her and making sure she's okay. So don't worry, internet. That's one really cool thing about uh, Vietnam is everybody's super friendly. The, the kids are always happy. I never see, it, I've been to a lot of places and I've never seen kids as happy. Here, there's Win Win. <laughs> Did you see her? Yeah, I bought her that dress. We bought her this dress. Oh, she went by quick. So she took a grab and I told her to just grab home because I want to walk all the way home. 
since we're trying to lose all the uh I'm trying to do 12 to 15,000 steps a day minimum. I'm trying to have a calorie actual like burn of a thousand and then my calorie intake's like under 800 and I'm feeling really good. Uh, I can tell I'm in some kind of keto, probably early phases of it. I have extremely high energy and extreme focus. Uh, if you have ADD, doing like a one meal a day keto diet really helps with focusing. I'm like laser sharp. Uh, right now and I feel really good energy is really high uh, I feel really really great so yeah the subway you know I, I would say middle of next year at best probably early 2023 for the actual real line to be fully functional and running which is kind of insane and it's been taking way too long um, I wish I wish it would be sooner because I'll take it all the time Oh, I was doing this in the gym today. I did chest today. 400 kg, 10 times, baby. 400 kg, 10 times, baby. I like lifting weights, too. Lifting weights is fun. Getting a good chest pump in. Ooh, it feels good. So, yeah, that, that's that's what's going on with the, the tourist thing here. You know, that's what's going on with the virus. It's under control pretty much everywhere. The one air, hot spot area has still, like, a case, like, every two or three days but that's also cooling down i think hanoi has reopened all their stuff as well so pretty much everything's reopened except for hai Phuong, which i think is the uh oh i see the thumbnail hai Phuong, which is pretty much like the shit they're talking about me now she's covering her face she's all shy let's see oh she's checking the picture Oh, she got shot. Hello. <laughs> Super shot. <laughs> it's funny. And then as far as like the interview goes, a couple of uh, Viet's ripped into me for, for not, you know, I'm not going to, even if I learn Vietnamese, I'm not going to do subtitles, guys. The whole point of the those interviews is to see who knows English and then interview them in English to show that Vietnamese know English. That's the whole point purpose of, of these interview videos. I, I don't know how that got lost in translation, but to, to clean that up for you, that, that's how it was. Granted, this last one wasn't the best one. You know, it is what it is, though. I went, I tried, I went up to people, I asked, so. I still have not started learning Vietnamese. I said I would. Um, you know, I kind of want to take this easier college course at another subscriber introduced me to it's only two times a week for like I don't know four months I think he said but two times a week would work for me way better than every day because it just throws a wrench in all my scheduling but I could definitely do two times a week to, to something where I have to go to it and you know it's set at a set time so that that is might be the, the viable option uh, I'm actually gonna try to get the information from him on that on which place he chose. I think he he actually left that comment. If you're watching again, dude, drop that comment where you, uh, oh, I know the video, so I know where I can go find it. I think he even put the name of the school, so. If I do sign up for that, I'll of course post videos on that information, like what I think about the class, all that good stuff like that. Okay, so we covered that. Now let's cover the orphanage. So the orphanage we've been waiting on just bought back uh, 20 or so of the kids so tomorrow we're gonna shoot the next orphanage video I don't think it's gonna be the last orphanage we pretty much got enough money left to do two more so but we're gonna shoot tomorrow's introductory there and then this weekend we'll go to Mega Mart and buy what they need and I'll of course film that document the receipts show you that it was sent there and then go back and show you that the goods were received there so yeah for everyone that keeps asking me about the orphanage thing, it's trust me, that money sits in a different checking account. It just sits there. Uh, we really want to do this orphanage because they're willing to, to put everything on the camera, put the name, you know, I can get all the information. So if you guys want to send extra stuff to them or even try to like adopt a baby, I don't know any of the legalities behind that, but yeah, I'm going to be able to post all the information about this one. So that's kind of why we've been waiting for it. And then, I'll try to find the fourth one on my own because Winnie found this third one. I'll just look up orphanages and go to all of them and see who's cool. 
and willing to be on camera and stuff like that. I would love to be able to just hand out the money to them, but it's, you know, it's Vietnam. So like, it might not be the best idea to do that. I really wish I could do that because it would make my life a lot easier, but you never know what, what's gonna happen with that money if you just give it to someone. I don't know enough about, you know, their extra information. There's some good looking ladies over here. My buddy just got married here. So uh, we should be married pretty quickly here. I don't know, next few weeks it's looking like. So yeah, I'll do a short little video on that, how that process is too. Look, like she's got like a princess dress on, the whole nine yards. Cute little family. Maybe these will be the thumbnail. We'll see. Never know what can be or not be the thumbnail. As far as like other news in Vietnam, um, I don't think anything too crazy. <laughs> I'm popular with the kids today. Let me just check the news for, for one second. Da, da, da. Oh, they're talking about, the big thing they're talking about in Saigon right now, Ho Chi Minh City, is like housing has fallen 20% with each, each wave. So like places like this, like these, uh, like this place you see, we saw boarded up back here, like the little buildings that went boarded out, they're 60% down in, in like actual rent. But the problem is, is the landlord doesn't want to rent it for the 60% down rent. You know, these used to be the highest rented areas pre-COVID. Like it used to be impossible. And the article specifically even talked about District 1. Let me see if I can find it so I can uh, kind of read you the, the facts. And then on the last segment, we'll talk about what I'm going to be filming this week and where I'm going to be traveling in the next two weeks inside of Vietnam. Hold on. All right. The second outbreak in the second half of 2020 caused another 25-40% fall. Third outbreak uh, rent down another 30-40% to their lowest levels ever. The vacancy rates at townhouses surged as food and beverage and fashion shops hit hard that by the pandemic ended their leases. And a lot of those places just shifted to online sales and they're actually doing pretty well uh, believe it or not they they completely shifted to online selling even food even seafood you know uh, I, let me see here. so during the pandemic a seafood restaurant that i know one of the writers at uh, the news place i'm reading this article from still managed to achieve sales of two thousand to three thousand dollars a day just by selling food online and shipping it to its customers directly via like a gram so a lot of places actually it might look like a lot of these places went under but if they had something that can be sold online food clothing or whatever it is they were able to pivot sell it online and get it out there um so yeah for 10 years before the pandemic a short of houses for rent and the city's prime location had caused rents to skyrocket. The longer the pandemic has lasted, the more places have closed, which I've documented, you know, a bunch of times. I'm actually going to try to do a series of all the places that are closed in the next week or two, because I find it to be pretty interesting. Yeah, Tiki, Lazdia, all of them are, are up 30, 40 percent. Uh, in sales and revenue from the pandemic. And then just like general rent is down, only building that rent isn't down too much, but it still fell about 30% is Golden River. Um, they, they would rather rent, like, you know, the apartment I had that first one, I offered them uh, eight, 800. A month to stay and the guy got all shitty and was like no way just move out when your lease is done I don't want to do that my place is worth a thousand dollars well it's you know um, March 22nd and no one's been there 
So for three months now, almost going on four, he's lost what would have been eight, 16, 20, $3,200 by being pretty much ignorant and thinking one thing when it's actually the other. Um, so probably wasn't a great idea on his part, but in the end of the day, I'm super happy with the place that we got now. It's 600 bucks a month. It's awesome. I have the sickest view ever. It's quiet. It's comfortable. I'm very happy there. Uh, everything is kosher, kosher, kosher at that new place. So as far as me and traveling, I am going to start going places. Uh, might be Natrang first. It might be the place right above Natrang. Um, hold on, I'll tell you the name of it. And I'm waiting on uh, a shipment before I can travel. Let me read this other little article for you about the place. The first, this is really the first place I want to go because it's called, they call it the Maldives, Maldives of, uh, of Vietnam. It's far away though. I, it, I, I don't know if a flight goes there, but I'm going to check into it all. Quai Nong Town, 42 millimeter, 42 kilometers coastline dubbed the Maldives of Vietnam. So that's the first place I want to go. And then since it's close to Nha Trang, go to Nha Trang after that. So maybe do like a week trip, essentially, to where I go to those two spots. Definitely not going to be by motorbike. Before that, I may do motorbike to Cantau, because uh, that's not too long of a ride. It's like two and a half, three hours. I can just take breaks. So yeah, that, that's the direction we're going to go with. So this week, I'm going to finish up Saigon content. And then next week, maybe film Saigon content, depending on when my package arrives. Um, and then we're off the boots and we're traveling, baby. We're going to see all of Vietnam, all the different areas. Hanoi, I'm in absolutely no hurry to go to. So many people vlog Hanoi. Same with uh, Da Nang. I, I would go to Da Nang quicker because I have a buddy there and he's pretty cool. We get along pretty good. So I could just see having a good time hanging out with him. But both those places have been vlogged so much. I'm trying to go to places, even the train has. So I'm trying to go to places that have not been vlogged as much. So that's really the plan. Even Cantau has been vlogged, but I think Cantau will probably be the first trip. Whether I drive there on motorbike or take a bus has not yet been decided. Uh, we'll have to see. I might even go to this uh, place off to the east that's like uh, an hour and a half away, two hours kind of by the beach as well so we'll see anyways guys I hope you enjoyed that video uh, possibly for the next few days it might just be one video a day um, I'm not sure yet uh, it, it depends on how things go when I'm out shooting so I hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, we unpacked a lot of information here if you have any uh, ideas for where you want to see me vlog around Vietnam, drop it in the comments on where you think I should go and vlog. I'm trying not to be farther than 500 kilometers from here. Um, I think Hanoi will do in like, I don't know, four or five months, long time. There, there's no need to go to Hanoi anytime soon. So many people are already there vlogging. So, all right guys, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace out.